Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for taking a look at this very, very short narrated PowerPoint on radiographic density. Just thought I'd uh, post this and maybe you'd find it helpful in preparation for the final tomorrow. Uh, so you all are now familiar with the definition of radiographic density uh, as being the degree of blackening on the radiograph. And we've gone through where that blackening comes from. Um, take a look at some pictures here. So we have three examples, three chest x-rays, obviously different patients uh, in different settings, but the image on the left is underexposed, right? It's too light, so it has received too little radiation. The image receptor has captured too little radiation. Therefore, there's not a sufficient degree of blackening on the radiograph. All the way to the right, uh, particularly with the left lung field on that image on the right, you see that left lung field is way too dark. You really don't see any detail of the lungs themselves. So that's an overexposed image. It's too dark or its density is too great. And the one right in the middle is, is just about right. It's properly exposed and has uh, the proper amount of radiographic density. So three different examples uh, to kind of imprint in your mind as what density means on the radiographic image. So we, we talked about MAS as being the controlling factor for radiographic density. And it's the controlling factor because it's the easiest one to use. We saw today in class that it it's doesn't have the most severe effect on density. We saw that uh, KVP, in fact, has a much more severe effect on density. But nevertheless, MAS is said to be the controlling factor because it's the, it's the first one you're going to go to as a technologist when you need to make a change in your density. Uh, we discussed how MAS controls your beam quantity, uh, all leading back to the process of thermionic emission and the quantity of electrons that are boiled off at the cathode, which are in turn going to control the quantity of X-ray photons produced at the anode. So as MAS goes up, we're heating the filament to a higher degree. We're boiling off more electrons, and they in turn are going to be converted into more X-ray photons. And this pretty much is a, is a, a directly proportionate relationship. It's, it's a pretty clear relationship. Now your textbook says that it's not exactly doubling or halving, and I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. And the textbook is correct, but for all intents and purposes, it's close enough. In other words, if you double your MAS, you're going to be pretty close to doubling your density. It's not exact, and we'll actually take a look at that next summer in the lab, but it's close enough. And for right now, I would suggest you certainly commit that to memory. That you double your MAS, you're going to see a doubling in radiographic density. If you half your MAS, you're going to see half the radiographic density, where the film is going to be twice as light. So let me run that by you again. If you double your MAS, your film will be twice as dark. If you half your MAS, your film will be twice as light. Just another way to explain that. Uh, one of the guiding rules as far as MAS, uh, in order to see any change on the film, in other words, if you're going to do two successive films on the same patient, same body part, and the first one is too light, and you want to make it change in MAS to make it darker, well, that you have to go up at least 30% in your MAS in order to see any visible change. So the suggestion I've made to you, and your textbook does as well, is to use things like half or twice as much or three times as much in your MAS to make a, vis to make a, a substantial change so that you can see a difference. You don't just want to go up a couple of MAS at a time because you're not even going to see any change from one film to the next. So MAS is the controlling factor for density, uh, but to see any visible change at all, you need at least 30% of a change in MAS, either up or down, right? So if you want to make the film lower, you need to go down in MAS. In other words, if you wanted to make the film lighter, excuse me, you need to go down in MAS by at least 30%. If you want to make the film darker to the point where you can actually see a difference, you need to go up at least 30% in your MAS. So important rules there. Uh, another rule we talked about was the, the law of reciprocity. Uh, and all this essentially means is, you know, the density that you're going, to, you're going to get on your image is based upon how much energy is absorbed by the image receptor. Energy meaning how much x-ray comes out the backside of the patient, as we explained today. So it really doesn't matter what combination of MA and time you use to arrive at that exposure. It's the amount of exposure that matters. Okay? Exposure meaning the amount of radiation that reaches the image receptor. So I'll give you two examples there. 400 MA at a tenth of a second is 40 MAS. 200 MA at a fifth of a second, or 0.20 second, is 40 MA. 
either combination gives you the same exposure, gives you the same quantity of radiation reaching the patient, and gives you the same quantity of radiation reaching the image receptor on the back side of the patient. So your density is going to be the same. 40 MAS is, is roughly the technical factor you're going to use uh, to control exposure for a KUB. So the KUB image you have there uh, would be the type of film that you would use if you were uh, doing a, a film-based radiographic exam of the KUB. You'd use about 40 MAS for an average size patient. So 40 MAS, no matter how you get there, it's going to give you a constant density. And that's a reciprocity law. Uh, we talked uh, only about so far one influencing factor of density. We introduced that last class and talked about it today. Uh, and it's one of the more important influencing factors of density. It is kilovolts peak or KVP. We reviewed today that KVP is the controlling factor for contrast, right? It's also the controlling factor for beam quality. But it does have an effect on beam quantity. That's why we say it has an influencing factor on density. And we saw today the influencing factor is pretty dramatic, right? Because if we talk about the 15% rule, it only takes an increase in KVP of 15% to essentially give us a doubling of the density. So that's why the 15% rule states that an increase in KVP by 15% is equivalent to doubling the MAS. So if you want to double your density, you essentially have two choices, right? You have a film that comes out that's too light, and you want to make it twice as dark. You could double your MAS, or you could increase your KVP by 15%. And the trick of all this moving forward is that you have to be careful when you're making changes in your KVP. Because remember, KVP is the controlling factor for contrast. So you may succeed in changing your density, but you pay a price in your contrast. In other words, if you were to use KVP to double the density of a film, if you were to go up 15%, your contrast is going to be lower. Because at higher KVPs, our contrast is reduced. So that's the idea of, of ex examining this as sort of like a seesaw, right, or a child's play. Uh, you have on both sides of the seesaw KVP and MAS, and you need to find the right combination of the two sets of technical factors to give you uh, optimal film quality. Uh, so if you make any change in KVP, if you wanted to use KVP to change the contrast level of the film, you'd have to compensate by going down in your MAS and vice versa. Uh, and that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves as far as uh, where we're going to go to next uh, in the beginning of uh, the spring semester. But what I do want you to take a look at is the example down at the bottom. So given an example of a radiograph of an elbow uh, that was performed at 4 MAS 60 kVp, the question is what kVp would be required to half the density, right? So you want a film that's half as dark. You want it to be twice as light. Let me run that by you again. So you've produced this image. 4 MAS at 60 kVp, and for whatever reason, the image to me looks pretty good, but let's just say you determined that it's too dark, and you wanted a film that was twice as light. Well, what kVp would you need to use to half the density? And the way to calculate that is to simply calculate what 15% uh, of 60 is and subtract it. So 60 kVp, 15% uh, of 60 is 9. Right? And so today you're going to quickly calculate 10% of 60 as 6. You're going to take half of that 6 and add it. So 6 plus 3 is 9 kVp. So you need to reduce your kVp setting by 9. Your new kVp is going to be 51%. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted just to briefly cover with you all today. Um, it's just really a few questions on uh, density and the controlling and influencing factors of density on the final. Most of the material really comes from uh, the rest of the concepts we covered all class. Again, I'll be available uh, via email for most of the evening. So any questions at all, please do uh, contact me, and I'll try to help as best I can. Good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.